Okay, so are you ready? Good morning. Just enjoying some porch time. Got my coffee. Got my camera. Got the serenades of the birds, the blue jays, the white winged doves, the lawnmowers, all that. Um, but I'm back because we have some unfinished business from last time. Uh, and so we'll kind of get to it. Um, remember last time we glanced at what iNaturalist was, right? It showed you how to get in some of the features that it has, and we will explore those more later. Um, we talked about what you want in your photo observations, um, what's going to make a good observation from an idea's perspective. It's not necessarily, um, you know, going to be something for National Geographic, you know. Um, how to use your GPS and Google Photos to your advantage. Um, there are other ways of, of doing locations and other ways of, of getting photos onto iNaturalist, but those happen to be the ones that work best for me. And, uh, you know, for me, that's how I tend to, if I take a picture with my phone, Okay, so are you ready? Okay, so as I was saying, uh, taking pictures with phones, putting them on Google Photos, from Google Photos to your computer, then on to iNaturalist. Um, just the way I happen to like to do it, especially with a picture taken with my iPhone. Um, and at some point we'll look at how to do that differently with the camera that I showed you, because uh, the GPS on that is just not good enough um, to be reliable. Anyway, um, so we did that last time. Today we're going to pick up exactly where we left off. Um, so we've got pictures on the iNaturalist and we want to at least put a little bit, uh, bit more thought into what we think we were seeing, uh, make sure we're clear on where we saw it um, on each of those observations. Remember there were 29 pictures that went on there but not 29 observations. And so we're going to have to consolidate a little bit, um, get any bad pictures out, get the best pictures put forward. And so I'll show you how to batch those, how to, um, you know, kind of approach identifying them. You don't have to know them down to species. In most cases, um, you know, I'm looking still at a whole new state of species. Um, and, you know, a lot of times I'll get into looking at plants that I've seen for the first time, uh, especially moths that I'm seeing for the first time. I'll, I can kind of show you that process sometime. Um, and so, yeah, I'm, I'd be making wild guesses. There is a feature recognition technology, um, I refer to it lovingly as the robot, that um, is going to make suggestions for you. And so I'll kind of show you how to use those, uh, take those with a grain of salt, think critically, um, make your best guess, and if you need to, kind of dial back the specificity of your guess um, when you're trying to, to get that ready for somebody else to come along and double check for you. Uh, so we'll do that today. Uh, we will look at um, the, the mapping. Um, I'll kind of give you a sense of what you would do if you didn't have GPS enabled for your phone or for your pictures from your camera, um, how you go about identifying where your observation took place. Uh, and we'll have an example even where uh, one of the, the pictures from my phone was a little bit askew. It didn't actually show up accurately with the GPS and so I'll show you how to correct that. As advertised, we're gonna batch some photos assign some locations, really correct the location, uh, and identify observations. And that's going to be some combination of what we bring to the table uh, versus what the robot suggests to us. However, if you just jumped on to the slow moving train and need to see how we got here, uh, you can always go back, walk it back, one video, uh, have a look at um, iNatural's desktop interface, what it is to, to make a good photo and get it on to iNaturalist. That's what we looked at last time. We'll be here when you get back. Okay, so I've set a scene in a lot of detail. It's my best Raymond Chandler impression. Um, you know, hopefully it brings the rest of this together and, and it'll run pretty quick, but shout out Raymond Chandler. Anyway, uh, so we've got 29 pictures here and so far iNaturalist is not making any distinction. Uh, and you know, it's basically saying each picture is an observation. So we're gonna need to correct that. I didn't take pictures of 29 different species by any means. Uh, it's going to be cut by half or a third. Um, now, 
as I'm looking along here, I can kind of see they're batched together at least. They're in chrono chronological order. So um, you know, I've got oh, some sort of like blue star grass or blue eye grass rather. Uh, I've got a vervain here. Um, let's see. I've got some pink lady uh, evening primrose. Okay, so I kind of know how these are going to batch together, but if there's any doubt you noticed, I can click on it, look closer. Um, get this out of my way. So um, I'll start batching. What I tend to do uh, is I take what I think is probably the best, most diagnostic picture and leave it on top. How that ends up working then is I'm going to click on the sort of secondary one, click on this box rather than this picture, um, just because it'll end up being a little bit clunky if you don't. Clicking on this box, I'm going to drag it over. This is my secondary picture. I'm dragging to go behind the one that I want to sort of be front facing. Okay? So it looks like it disappeared, but really it's the second one behind this better picture. I think this is probably the better picture here. This is a little bit blurry, but the point was, so the, the blooms are blurry, but I can see the leaves here of this vervain. So I'm going to move this over behind here. Uh, let's see, with these evening primrose, uh, I've got one picture that's sort of the full context, one that's better for the, the flowers, and one that's better for the leaves. Uh, and let's see, actually I noticed here, there's a little spider here, this is some sort of crab spider. Uh, so I might kind of indulge myself. Let me look and see. So this picture had it, this one did not. Hello. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull over a second copy of this picture. There it is down here. And I'm going to focus on the spider for that one, too. So you kind of get a two for on the same picture sometimes, especially uh, when there are insects that are on the blooms. All right, so uh, any one of these pictures, I guess, would work. I'll use the full context one as the, the lead picture. and put these on a support. Uh, the whole point is, sometimes people will be able to identify it from one picture. Other times, they need a second look. You try to anticipate what they might would ask for, right? And what you think is going to be distinguishing about the plant. And so flowers, leaves, those obviously just kind of you know, look and see what, what drew your attention to the plant. Uh, and usually that's a, a pretty good hint of what you're going to need. All right, so let's see. There's some blue bonnets there, so I combine those two pictures. Uh, some sort of green thread or coreopsis. Uh, I don't know either. These pictures is very good. These are pretty hard to get. You can see uh, how fine the leaves are on these. Um, either one's very good, but I think they'll end up being diagnostic. I'm just going to put them together, not dwell too much on it. Uh, here's a plant that I should know, but I don't. All right, and so, again, I took three pictures. Um, you know, try to get something with full context, one that's focused on the leaves, one that's focused on the flower, which may not be completely open and bloom. Uh, but still, just doing the best I can to kind of give information there because I don't know what it is. I'm going to need some help. There's an Indian blanket here that I'll put together. Uh, there's this Montclair vein here. This is what I showed you in the introduction. We put those together. Um, a Mexican hat or upright prairie cone flower. We put those together. That's not going to be a hard one to, to get identified. Uh, then there's some sort of Brome, some sort of grass. I would guess maybe a brome. Uh, and so grasses are hard to do as well. You'll see my hands are always going to be in a grass picture uh, because of crap like this. right? You can't see anything that's going on there. So you'll notice I took that picture and I took the same one again in proper focus. So I'm dropping the one, hitting X to remove the one that's not any good, and otherwise putting these together. Uh, and so you all need some help with that. Uh, I don't know, this is some sort of, I don't know if it's research or, or something similar, um, but I got the general shape of the tree, it was right by a creek bed. I got the flower, I've got the leaves. And I tried to make it a point without hurting myself to point out there are these tiny little pricks on it. Alright, so this is most iconic to me, I guess, of all the pictures. We'll do that. Uh, and then all I've got left are these insects. And so you'll notice as uh, we go along, there's going to be some sort of best guess made for each one of these. This one might be kind of tricky, right, because it's the, the robot pretty much that identifies it's going to notice the picture of the, the plant and focus on that. Probably won't pick up on the, the spider. Uh, and so I might make a note there 
and uh, and I'll have to overwrite it. Uh, but anyway, found this uh, butterfly on the sidewalk on the way home. I don't know if it's like a dog face or a sulfur or something. I don't know exactly. I don't need to know exactly. Um, I'll get it down to the best I can. If I have to, I'll just say it's a butterfly and just let it be. Uh, and then hopefully somebody will come along and help me out. Okay, so I've got these all grouped together. Uh, again, notice, so we'll need the species, the date, uh, and the location. Date and location have been done for me. That's not always the case, right? So pay attention to that. It'll c catch you when you hit this and say, hey, you've got blanks here. Uh, you should address those. Um, but fortunately, we won't have that problem just for the species. But say, for instance, that we didn't have uh, the location on for us. Uh, then when I click on this, right, so this is the walk around the neighborhood. You can kind of see the path, right? So we made this loop. Now, let's see. So say, which one did I click? How about this? Okay, so here we've got a blue bonnet. See, I didn't know where it was. And this was one that actually was a little bit thrown off. Right, so I mentioned, hey, you can see my path. Well, this one is thrown off kilter. Um, and you see how big this area is. So this is the precision of its guess. Right, so it's not very precise on, on where my location was. It actually is pretty accurate, but it's not precise. Uh, and so we can round at this corner here. This is the location that it was, more or less, uh, but it was along the roadside here. It was about here, okay? And so you notice much more precise now that I went and corrected that. And so I just kind of noticed that one looked a little bit wonky. Updating that observation, um, that's what you would do. And, you know, the, the tricky part is, you know, say you didn't have any idea um, and didn't have any any location on there, then what it's going to do is it's going to start you all the way out, right? So this is what you would see if you didn't have any location service, and then you got to work your way in. Or what's kind of nice, I'll show you an example, what's kind of nice is you can save locations, right? So this is close to where I used to work. And so I go out here and bird before work frequently. And so I save this location. That's just something you can do, okay? But anyway, uh, point being, if you can get location services on there to begin with, you're golden. Let's try to identify some of these. So uh, I mentioned you don't have to know what it is. You can just say this is a plant or it's a flowering plant. You can be very vague uh, and, you know, take your time to go research it or somebody will probably come along at some point and give you some help with it. Um, but you should give some sort of guess. A lot of times, by accident, you'll post something without any sort of guess. If you can just get it on the vague right track, somebody will come along and get it. The people who are expert will oftentimes pick a category that they want to identify. And so, like I said, I don't know what exact one it is, but I did mention I thought it was a blue-eyed grass, and so the robot's kind of going along with me on that. This I know is some sort of verbane. I don't know which exactly, but you see that it's giving me a suggestion based on what it looks like and based on where I am. So having that GPS location in already is important. Uh, and so, you know, if I had a reasonable thought, oh, I think it's probably woolly and not go for a vein, I can click on it, look at it, and see if it really kind of checks out with my, my instinct. For now, I'm not going to go there. I can come back later and update, edit my... Uh, my guess. Um, I can change my mind based on what other people say. Uh, and so I'm not going to get hung up on it. I think this will come up as a pink lady, right, which is a, a species of evening primrose. i take that. It's a Texas blue bonnet. But you see that it makes other suggestions as well based on, on where you are and based on how it looks. Uh, and if I, I think it's a Texas blue bonnet, but if I'm really kind of uh, anxious about making that call, then I can just call it a lupine. Right, so Lupinus is going to be um, the genus for that. So I can, you know, take sort of a, a broad brush stroke there if I want to, but I know what it is. All right, some sort of Coryopsis, I think, or you know, green thread, rather. Right, I did say that earlier. I believe that's the one it is. But you know what? I don't know. 
I'm not sure whether it's green thread or slender green thread. Maybe I can figure that out if I dig a little bit. I encourage you to do so, but for the sake of time, we'll take the general approach. This one I didn't know. Probably should. Stork's bill. That's the guess. Okay, and so I'm going to take the genus on this. Right, there are a few different ones, and so I'm not sure which one it is exactly. You see erodium shows up a lot. I'll take the, the, the genus for this for now. But if I really wasn't sure, I could back out of that, and you know what, I'll show you. I could override. I'm like, I really don't think so. I, I just know it's a plant, and I'll, I'll click plant, right? I do that with insects a lot, right? So there are lots of, uh, a lot of times it wants to tell me that what I'm looking at is a beetle. I know it's not. Well, what, what am I going to do? I don't have to just follow its lead. Um, you know, I can override it to some extent. Indian blanket. Uh, so blanket flowers would be sort of the, the general idea. And you see there are a number of different ones, but I know it's Indian blanket. So my mock for vein again. So I'm pretty sure what it is, but you know what? It's got the same sort of flower head as a moss verbena, verbena or a rose vervain, which are seen nearby. Maybe I'll take the lighter approach on that one. The main thing is I don't want to create a situation where somebody who is uh, as unfamiliar as I am, comes along and agrees with me, and then we've put something in the wrong category. This is a type of cone flower, uh, but I know it to be an upright fairy cone flower, also a Mexican hat. This I said, I don't know, a brome? Right, okay, so it's probably one of these bromes. Um, and so, I don't know precisely, but I'm going to say that. Otherwise, very often I would do grasses, Palacea. So if I didn't have even that hunch, OACA. Like I said, though, I think it's a bone. This one, having looked at it. Okay, so it's saying it's a legume, which is, is right, because one of the, the hints on that is these compound leaves. Probably sweet acacia, but I'll leave it at legumes. There's our butterfly. All right, the yellow ones tend to be some sort of sulfur. Seems like they never stop moving. Obviously, this one wasn't. Okay, and then we've got this last one. I'm focusing on the spider. So spider on right. Spider. I think it's a crab spider. It's going to try to tell me that's an even primrose, which it is. But for this observation, and notice I split the two, this one I'm looking for a spider. Okay, and actually specifically or more specifically, the crab spider. Don't know what species exactly, but I know it's a crab spider. All right, so I've got a full set of information. I made an, an annotation here um, just to kind of give some context. People are going to look at that and see the plant. I want them to focus on the picture of the, the spider. Uh, and I'm going to say upper right flower because I realize there's one at the bottom corner. Okay, I've got 13 observations from those 29 pictures. Having deleted one and consolidated the rest, I'm going to hit Submit. It'll save these, and there's not instant gratification here. Even on the ones I know, they're not research grade. That's sort of like the, the badge of acceptance that you get. Um, you know, if you took some good pictures and, and other people could identify them. Uh, doesn't mean the other ones aren't useful. Right? It's useful to me to just see what, to recall what I've seen and where I saw it. So here they're uploading. That's going to take me to my page, my observations. All right, and so these will change over with time. All right, so like some of these from the day before I already have uh, going back. The plants are relatively hard. It's wildflower season, um, and there are not a lot of people that are super interested in them. Um, I do a lot of mothing, as you can see. Not a lot of help there. Um, but when I post a bird, a lot of times within two minutes it's identified. Right? So sometimes you get pretty instant gratification. But that's the overview. Um, we'll follow up with any questions, but that's pretty much all I wanted to, to address for today. Okay, so we've got those observations in the oven. We'll come back and look at them, I don't know, in like a week. Um, that gives a little bit of time for everybody to catch up. Um, hopefully we'll see some... Um, some research grade observations by that time, uh, and others will take time. Like I showed you in the previous video, it could be months later or maybe never that you'll get some confirmation on that. Um, but you know, I think that the 
the process is part of what's enjoyable about it. And certainly we can go back and try to figure out some of these for ourselves too. Um, let's not let's not be completely reliant on other people. Um, and so next time, uh, what I think we'll do is we'll look back at those. Uh, I'll show you how to, to filter out and see just those observations as opposed to the other, I don't know, 2,800 some that, um, that I've made in the past. Uh, that's going to be useful, especially when you get further down the road. If you want to look back at a specific day, specific place, uh, you can look at just your observations or I can show you how to explore uh, and see what other people have found. Um, you can look season by season. You can look at specific parks. Like I like to use it as a little bit of recon before I go somewhere uh, to see what other folks have noticed in the past. Um, and so I think we'll spend a decent amount of time just looking at filters and just kind of getting a feel uh, for how you can reflect back on your observations, uh, reflect on other people's observations, or maybe use those to get more familiar with uh, and get a little bit better expectation uh, for what you might find uh, in your area. See you next time. So next time we're back to check on today's observations and we'll play around with filters. I hope you'll join me. Thanks for your attention. Um, be sure to like or share or subscribe or comment, please. Or yeah, don't. And we'll see how far I'll go for my own amusement. So long.